pledge allegiance. Can you allegiance please join me with the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectmen's meeting for June 18th, 2018. We have a public hearing, RSA 419A, the question on increasing fees paid by paid for the hiring of firefighters for private details from 30 to 41 percent to cover the increased cost of the New Hampshire retirement system, Medicare and workers' comp in accordance with RSA 419A. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is a result of something that the board had done previously with the uh, police department private details. Um, the fire chief has followed up with a memo to the board uh, request, requesting an increase as well to cover the additional costs that come in uh, so as to not impact the community. Anybody from the public who would like to speak on this public hearing? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board. Is there anybody on the board that would like to speak on it? I, I think it's an excellent idea. I would it does agree. not cost us, right? The, the person right. hiring them pays it. Right. That's right. correct. Right. So it's currently at 30 percent. It would increase it to at a 41 and change, almost mm -hmm. 42 as well. So it's a benefit to the town. I mean, it's correct. Yep. Yes. Do we yeah. need to vote on this now, or do we have to have another meeting? Uh, that's a good question. Under this, I think you just had to have the one public hearing. Okay. So, is there any other questions from the public? I'll make the motion. I'll close this. Oh. The oh, public sorry. hearing at sorry. 701, <laughs> and. Yeah, Regina and me. You want to make a motion? She did. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we increase the uh, hiring of firefighters for private details from 30% to 41%. I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous. Public comment period. Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak? If you do, just come up and give your name. And uh, Good evening. Norman Silverdick, 70 Tidewell Road here in Hampton. And representing the rational taxpayers of Hampton. Uh, it's my understanding that there may be a discussion or some information regarding the cost of burying the uh, wires in uh, downtown to put them underground, and that that number is pretty substantial into the $15 million range. And um, without getting into a lot of details about it. It's, it's a staggering cost to begin with, uh, if that is the, the correct information. And it just seems to me that the Board of Selectmen uh, have enormous amount of uh, capital projects in the works right now with the wastewater treatment plant, the, uh, the uh, marsh pipes that are requiring immediate attention, road construction, road repair, and to even have more than a one-minute conversation about this at this time would be inappropriate. I can understand the beautification of the downtown, trying to make it more attractive for people to come here, but it would be, I'd be really hard-pressed to see where the return on investment for spending $15 million would ever come from in terms of increased business to the community, although I would certainly like to see an improved downtown. That's my answer comment and thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Anybody else would like to speak? Good evening. Richard Rennie at 29 Highland Ave. I know you don't respond to questions during public comment. However, I'm asking for your response to my concerns when you discuss later on in the evening item 2D under uh, the Director of Public Works uh, agenda, Mr. Chris Jacobs, the closing of the Church Street parking lot. First, a, a posting at the Church Street resident parking lot states the closing from June 19th until further notice. Uh, I realize the need for a staging area for the equipment and construction, but will the closing be in effect until the completion of the temporary force water line or continue until the results of the special town meeting and hopefully approval of the bond issue and installation of a new pipeline. So that I'm just curious how long that's going to last. Second, this closure will cause problems and inconvenience for both the neighborhood residents as well as for other town residents who drive to the beach seeking parking space. This past weekend, 
Some private lots were charging up to fifty dollars for parking. Yep. I am aware that this board, I am asking this board to make a decision to allow vehicles with resident decals to park at any town owned lot or at a minimum, permit those residents to park at the large lot on Church Street, and to ensure that the, the attendants are aware of this policy. Some may argue that doing so will result in a loss of revenue. However, I feel that the benefits of accommodating to the residents and tax or taxpayers should be the priority. A portion of our taxes we pay for the maintenance and staffing of those lots as well as towards the lease agreement between the town and the diocese for the Church Street lot. Residents do not pay for the North Beach parking or the High Street municipal lot. We shouldn't have to pay any at any municipal lot or it, it has been suggested obtain a, a seasonal lease. Again, allow vehicles with resident stickers to park at the Church Street lot until the construction ends and the lots are reopened. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak in the public? Go ahead, Ellen. I'm here for the very same reason. I'm really concerned about the cost to the um, residents who are working down on the beach to the possibility of having to pay seven days a week to, uh, to park down there. It's cost easily <clears throat> well over a thousand dollars for the summer po probably closer to two thousand and um, that's just not possible if you're working down there so I would really appreciate it if you would consider um, allowing the residents to park at the Church Street lot for the summer or until the duration of the construction thank you sure. anybody else from the Good evening. My name is Sean O'Brien, 9 Highland Ave, Hampton. My, my concern is, is the same as the other people. Um, the parking uh, for my, my business and for my uh, tenants at the, the, the residential lot, because um, we have a mixed-use building, uh, this would put great, great hardship on my business. and. I would, you know, uh, ask that the board consider allowing us to park at the Church Street lot in the middle, so that, you know, even if they section off a little section for, for the uh, residential and, um, you know, the lease spots. I mean, I've been here 30, 38 years, and I can't believe how quickly the time has gone. But uh, again, you know, it would be. Uh, De detrimental to my business and my uh, uh, tenants and my uh, patrons in the summer if they choose to take our parking there. We, we have parked over on Island Path before when they were doing other construction in the area and that was a disaster for my business. The, the cars we broken into every, every day, you know, literally, and it was just terrible. Yeah, I mean, over by the church, it's much, much better area, you know, for for everybody in that immediate uh, neighborhood. So, again, I uh, I plead with you people to um, make a uh, prudent decision as far as like their trucks and stuff. I, I know that the the town owns another lot <coughs> uh, fur further up on the marsh side, uh, where the the V is to the left, and they have a big lot up there that they could you know, put their equipment and everything else there too that the town never uses. So I just don't uh, see the uh, necessity of closing down our, our own only parking. Where is your business? Nine Highland Ave. It's two buildings in back of the Ashworth. Okay, and what type of business is it? It's a, um, it's called the Highland Ave Inn and uh, it's rooms and apartments. That, that we rent out in the summer and year round. Mm. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else wants to speak in the public? Good evening. Good evening. My name is Jimmy Abukalil. I uh, have a convenience store at uh, 339 Ocean Boulevard in Hampton. 
And to be honest with you, I even when the parking was available, we used to have a hard time parking. Now, without parking, I don't know where do we go. And we don't have enough money. We, we go from day to day to make our need with paying taxes and all the payment every month we have to do. So I cannot imagine I'm paying for another, you know, payment for a parking. So if it, you could make it convenient, we could park somewhere close, that would be appreciated. Is that Lola's? Yes. It's a great spot. Yeah. Thank you. But it's very hard to make it. Oh, don't tell me. I got to take it right in front. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak? My name is Patricia Klotz, and my husband and I live at Hampton Meadows, and we enjoy driving down to the beach to listen to the music. And so we drive down there, we park, we walk the 10 minutes it takes or whatever and listen to the music and come back. We don't park all day, we don't stay there. So my idea was maybe if they let us park in the lot that you walk across the street, I don't know the name of it, but they do charge for that lot. If they let us park for two hours, uh, the attendant says, okay, here's a slip or you get in for two hours, we could go down and listen to some music for two hours and not you know, have to find a place to park when there's no places to park. You can drive around for a long time, and it's a little far for us to walk from f four miles. Thank you. You're welcome. Good evening, Neil Stallings, uh, 415 Ocean Boulevard. I'm here for the parking as well. Um, I'd like to bring up two points um, that I don't think the others have brought up. Um, one is that I understand that the whole lot is going to be used for staging and maybe parking for the, the workers. And I also understand that the temporary fix is probably a pipeline across the land following the roadway. Um, I'd ask the board to look into whether staging or if the state would have a problem with it along the highway because you're just going to have to take all that pipe and run it down the length of where you're going anyway. So that might be one solution to look at, not putting everything there and slowly taking it away, but actually having them at multiple staging grounds. Um, my second point is, is I use this lot um, for overnight parking. I only have um, one spot at my condominium, and I um, have three cars that are registered. Uh, one's to a daughter's in college. She's not typically <laughs> around. But I do use it, and it's the only overnight parking that I have and use on a regular basis. And like some of these business owners, if that's taken away from me, I don't know what my other options are because I walk the 10 minutes down the road and, and you know, been using that for the three or four years I've, since I've moved to Hampton. So I'd ask you to take those uh, couple points into consideration along with the other comments. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak? Seeing none, I will bring it back to the board for announcements and community calendar. Mary Louise? Um, this is classified as a public hearing? No, this no. is. No, you're in well, community yeah, meeting. Well, don't you want remarks on no. Church oh. Street? Why not? No, it's well, community comment. Community comment. Does that will be com that'll be coming up when the, the It's on the agenda for It's on later. the agenda with the, okay. with the public because board I, director. I'm concerned about what's happening there. Alrighty. So you have nothing? Nothing. Regina? I just wanted to say that Saturday night I was at the Sandcastle event along with the chairman and I talked to Greg Grady for a while and he said that it was one of the best events they had and he also he was very thankful for the board of selectmen and everything they mm. they do to uh make sure we have that every year well we did a good job on the weather anyways for the week really good so. job i think he brought the weather it brought the weather here so. jim yeah i just want to say that i was down the beach area today down and uh things looked really nice down there the sand castles look beautiful there are lots of people down there you know enjoying the beach having a good time and keep this weather up Rick. No, I'm glad everyone had a great time. 
I just want to uh, let everybody know that we might not be on the air for our next meeting. Uh, the cable company, is, or the cable committee, is working hard at, at updating all their system, and so the, the next week, the week around Fourth of July, is when they're going to do it. It will be videoed, and it will be able to watch uh, stream, stream it. But you won't, you might not get it. They might not have that part of it up. It might not be up live. So I just want people to know that that our first meeting in July probably won't be live but it will be taped. The second thing is, is I, I want to chime in on, on the beach. I was down the beach uh, three of the days this weekend, and uh, there was a lot of people down there. Traffic was heavy. Traffic yeah. was backed up to the landing road lights on, uh, on Saturday night. Uh, there was a bunch of trash down there, but you want to know something? Sunday morning, the uh, public works did an excellent job cleaning it up down there. Also, the, uh, the state workers. Uh, so... Uh, in spite of the fact that they're not up to full staff yet, we've st we, we got to remember this is not summer yet, and th they're not up to their staff. The same with the police department. I know he had uh, brought some in from other towns and stuff, but uh, it was, it was, everything was run very orderly, very well. It was a good weekend, so I want to thank everybody for that. All right, so approval of the June 4th minutes, non-public session sealed minutes, and the public, oh, I'll do the other ones, the non-public first. I'll make the motion to approve. I'll motion second. seconded. All those in favor? Right. Unanimous. Uh, public session minutes for June 4th. Also moved, Mr. Chairman. All right. Second. I'll second. Regina, yeah. all those in favor? Sorry. Unanimous. Consent agenda. We have a cable renew committee appointments of Ann Carnaby, Richard Cantor, John Judson, Brian McCain, Nathan Page, and James Waddell. We have cemetery deeds. We have corn operated amusements. We have one, two, three, four dance hall permits, uh, three uh, entertainment licenses, pool table permit, raffle permits, re release of a welfare lien, road closure permits, solicitation permits, and the use of town property permits. I have a motion to. I'll move the agenda. consent agenda. A second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Appointments. Christy Poland, Finance Director. Good evening, Christy. Good evening. All right. I'm here with the uh, May financials. You should have received them in your um, email. It was very late on Friday. I apologize for that. I started them last Monday and it took that long with all the interruptions so um, but they were emailed out on Friday copies in your box and they are um, up on the town website as of Friday so it's the fifth month of the year the target is 41.7 percent on the revenue side uh, when you review the revenue from 17 to 18 the 18 revenue is greater than 17 by $103,157 the month's total income was $680,605. Of that total, motor vehicles came in at $387,655. Income on tax, interest on taxes came in at $85,001. Building permits at $28,634. Departmental income at $46,335. Rye Sewer Agreements at $44,712. Um, under Parking Lots, the daily layout revenue came in at $22,599, and the Real Estate Trust at $48,176. Mm -hmm. On the expense side of things, you will find that we are at 38.8% spent or under budget by $717,428, or 2.9%. In April of 17, we were under budget by $713,559, or 2.89%. So very close to the same exact spot as where we were last year at this time. This month, I'm just going to go through and point out where all of the um, major sections of the budget stand. Under executive, it's at 41.24%. Election registration and vital statistics is at 37.7%. Financial administration is at 37.3%. Legal is at 43.94%. Still over budget, but that gap has closed a lot over the last couple of months. 
Personnel administration is at 44.09%. Planning is at 43.64%. General government buildings is at 40.57%. Cemetery is at 33.66%. Municipal insurance is at 30.92%. Other general government, which is the parking lots, is at 32.4%. Police department as a whole is at 36.4%. Fire department is at 38.9%. Emergency management is at 120.56, but that's a $1,000 line. So, And uh, we do receive uh, reimbursements from the state for uh, some of the emergency management stuff. Other services, hydrants is at 51.97%. Street lighting is at 40.3%. Public Works is at 41.9%. Animal Control is at 37.24%. Mosquito Control is at 12.98%. Welfare is at 36.03%. Parks and Recreation is at 39.5%. The Library is at 39.01%. Conservation is at 38.79%. Um, under your special revenue funds, the Fund 24 Re Recreation Fund has a balance of $234,539, which includes beach sticker donations of $9,737 and 7825 being awarded in scholarships. Now that they have people signing up for like their summer camps and events, they're starting to award scholarships to um, the campers. Fund 25, the Cable Committee, has a balance of $497,952 with the open field for the studio, not included in that number. Uh, Fund 26, Private Detail, has a balance of $149,509. Fund 27, the EMS Fund, has a balance of $401,486. And the Wastewater System Development Charge, uh, the fees collected in 2018, Total $20,349 with a balance in that account of $217,212. The board does have approved projects totaling $97,376 out of that fund that haven't been expended yet. So the adjusted balance uh, for the wastewater system development charge is $119,836. And that is it. Very good. Mary Louise, do you have any questions? Not if this in a moment, no. Regina? Uh, just one question. On the cable committee yes. fund, is there any POs, payouts on that? Or, um, I'm sorry, purchase orders on that? Yeah, there's a purchase order for the um, station. In, I didn't look it up. This, oh, actually, I have it in the back here. I do have it. I think it's 200. Let's see. I can tell you how much that is. It is fund 25. Hopefully it's on here. I don't know if it was done before this report. Let me see here. But that's okay. We I thought it was. It's. I think it's like a hundred and eighty something thousand. I believe. Yeah. Right. Okay. I don't think it's included in this total though. No. Okay. So we still have some. Uh, yeah. Deductions coming out. Right. I think number. it was like the, the total total contract. I think it's like two hundred and twelve or two hundred eighteen thousand. I believe. Okay. Plus, I know the electricians have been in here, and there was like I think. Uh, Purchase order for that too. Okay, thank you. Chrissy, good report as always. Thank We're you. on top of things. And when people hear that you have a, a balance of 750 or so, I mean that that's a nice cushion, right? I mean that's not padded or anything. That that's just no. a nice cushion. To and make we're sure. going into the busy season, so that yeah, number right. will drop considerably very right. quickly. Right. But that you're already on top of what's going on and, and who's yes, spending. Yes, we what. pay very close attention. Very good. Thank you. Yep, yeah, great. You do a great job. I'm Thank always uh, impressed. Thank you. Excellent job. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Did you have something else? The tan closing is that? Oh, the tan closing. I thought Christina took that off. Oh. Tan closing is not happening. It's off. Okay, it's, off. it's on the agenda. I'm looking at that's off. Oh. There was a, there's an update. It's postponed. Agenda. It's postponed. Okay, yeah. sorry. Postponed. Shouldn't hold yeah. my mouth. <laughs> Chris Jacobs. Jen Hale, the director and deputy director from DPW. Uh -huh. <laughs> Bring some 
uh, reinforcement. Uh. What would make you think you need that? Huh? What would make you think you need that? <coughs> he tells us he's coming, so let's do what he wants to do. Good evening. Um, truck bed. Is that the easiest thing, or did you put that first or last? Uh, the first thing is the prime uh, preliminary design services for the wastewater treatment plant. Okay. I'm up. You up? Um, in your packets, I put together a memo and the contract that Rice Pierce developed after multiple meetings together with us, uh, both Mike and Mike, uh, working through what we're calling the wastewater treatment plant facilities upgrade. Uh, all the work that uh, we plan on doing with the approved money uh, from the Warren article uh, back in March. We've developed a scope of work uh, that outlines each of the components uh, that we're addressing first and what were the phrase one critical, coming up with uh, what we're calling the 30% design uh, plans. Those plans become the basis of every decision after. So getting here is the first step. Um, it allows us to put all the pieces on the board. And I know back from uh, many of the meetings we had through the budget committee and through the selectmen, you know, people wanting to see what is that plan. This is the plan we're developing and uh, starting the design process uh, to make the big decisions. So their proposal, uh, we have put it together using the SRF contract the documents so that we can go after the SRF funding. DES has approved the contract. So we are requesting that the board uh, authorize the town manager to approve the contract provided by Wright Pierce Engineers and approved by D, uh, NHDES in the amount of $337,130. Um, Wright Pierce, as you know, is intimately aware of our wastewater treatment facility. They have been instrumental uh, to getting us to where we are today. We do have a qualifications-based uh, contract with them uh, that's done within the last three years. Uh, so this does meet the purchasing policy. Any questions from the board? Mary Louise? Not off the top of my head, thank you. Regina? No, I mean, if you need a motion for us, I'm ready to make one. Is it possible that we could maybe publicize this after tonight so that if anyone wants to look at it? We sure can. I mean, it's, it's a public, public document, document once we do, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Jim? Uh, no, fine. Mike? Um, Rick? So I need a motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we accept this. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay, so the next is on to the SRF right. loan application. So this follows up uh, exactly with this June 30th is the deadline for the loan application itself for the SRF funding. This is uh, funding that we have already been, uh, they call it pre-qualified for. So this is the complete application and it does require the board uh, to make a motion saying that uh, you will be authorizing the town manager, Christy, from the financial standpoint uh, to be able to apply. Um, we've already done the appropriation through the warrant and execute the contracts. Um, there is a form in your packet. Uh, this form I have to have signed back to be able to send over to DES. Any questions from the board? Mary Louise? Um, not on... Not on that item. Regina? I'm good, thank you. Jim? Good. Rick? Good. So we need a motion. I'll make a motion. To, to accept. Authorization to Church Street uh, so it force mains the SRF loan application. application. All right, we have a motion. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. So the next thing we have is your bid on the uh, yard horse and the waivers. Correct. Um, we put out bid uh, 2018 uh, 007 for a yard horse. Um, people may or may not be aware. Article 24 of the March 2018 town meeting was uh, requested authorization to purchase a used yard horse in value not to exceed $38,000. Uh, we put it out to bid. Um, when we started the bid process, we had several people that actually had yard horses. By the time the bid process wound down, only one vendor had yard horses left in his uh, yard. Um, he had six to choose from. Um, I copied the um, information that we received from Trans East Equipment. 
we've reached it. Uh, his bid was for a price of $38,000. And also, um, sorry, $38,500. I also have uh, off agreement with him that he'd like to buy back the yard horse he sold us a couple of years ago. We only bought it for four. Uh, I think he's talking around 2500 that he'd like to give us because he'd like to resell it to somebody else. Uh, this is the one that uses the air bladder and he's on its good that he wants to take it back. That's all I want to say about that. Um, so it's before you because one, it exceeds the 15,000 and two, um, it, we did not receive three bids. We just simply need a motion to. So you need a motion to waive the agree. purchasing policy. I'll make that motion. Second. Um, we got a discussion. Go ahead. Yeah. It seems to me in recent years that we've been replacing a lot of those yard horses. I know they're used vehicles. Um, but at some point in time, what I would like to see, I guess perhaps toward the end of the summer or early September, I'd like to see a printout of all of the department um, vehicles and accessories. Because <coughs> we have done that in the past. Yeah. I think that would help. Okay. For the time being, uh, I will go ahead with uh, Rick's motion. I can interject on that um, to answer your question, Mary Louise. When I first got here, uh, what we were using for a yard horse was an, basically an over-the-road right. truck. Right. Uh, <coughs> the window wouldn't roll down and the door wouldn't shut. Yeah. So basically deemed it as a safety hazard. Uh, we traded that one in to get the red one that we have now. Yeah. It was essentially a, um, it was a, it was a stopgap measure at that time. And because yeah. it was much less than the 15,000 is something that we could do. Uh, for safety, at least the the one we've been using, the door shuts and the windows and the yeah. windshield wipers work and the heat comes on. So um, this one would be a lot better. Yeah, it is. It <laughs> um, looks like it has the hydraulic capacity that the other yeah, one Yeah, exactly. And um, we had, had some operational issues with the, the little red one, I'll call it. So um, this is one of those pieces of equipment that I don't ever think that we'd need a brand spanking new one. Right. Because somebody else buys these, uses them in their yard for mm -hmm. one or two years, and then as an operational expense, trades them in. And we'd be, we'd love to have this one. It would make our operation so much more safer and efficient. Now look, you had, you had a couple guys over to take a look at them? Yes, we sent two of, I sent uh, the two, Ryan Sharp, Dan Coughlin, who work at the transfer station. They went down, looked at the six, narrowed it down to two of them. And uh, then we went back down with our mechanic, and he went through the truck, uh, noticed some things that they got uh, the vendor to, to, uh, to uh, correct, and um, that's the one that they've all elected would be the right piece. Okay. So your motion is to uh, waive the purchasing uh, policy and award the bid to uh, Trans East Equipment. Am I correct? Jim? That's what you... Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, before we move on to the next one, uh, I confused myself and therefore confused you, <laughs> so I did good. On my cover letter for the SRF loan application, I put the Church Street Pump Station force mains. Well, we will be applying for that one. <laughs> that one's not due June 30th. The attachment to it is for... Uh, the facilities so, upgrade project. So just in your motion, I don't know if you need to redo it just to make sure that we're all uh, agreeing that we're doing it for the wastewater treatment facility upgrades is what I'm asking for approval for. So for clarification? It's for the wastewater treatment plant facility upgrades. Facility upgrades. You, should, you should amend the motion that went, went to clarify. passed, and it was okay, Jim and Rick first and second. You both uh, all? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. All right, so yeah. then I would revote that. All those in favor? Unanimous. I, I apologize for that. I just have to make it right while we're here. While we're here, it's the best time to do it. Okay. Um, Next one. Is if before we could move on to the Church Street lot, I'd, I'd like to bring the board up to date um, with respect to the force main itself. Um, last Thursday afternoon, um, as part of our regular practice, before we put the a force main into service, and we've been switching from one week using the ductile iron to one week using the AC. 
uh, the ductile iron pipe would not hold pressure, or it would only hold six pounds of pressure. Our agreement with the state was that we needed it to hold 15, uh, three times its normal operating pressure. On Friday morning, after the tides had gone out, um, the staff repressurized the line. They went out and walked the marsh. Lo and behold, we have break number three. Uh, we had effluent visible at the surface. Um, but at the same time, um, we, when we reported it to the state, the shellfish section, Chris Nash had already taken samples that day. So in other words, um, all the processes and procedures that we have, we go through um, are in place to, if you will, monitor any potential impact. Um, we believe that we literally caught the, well, when we pressurized the line is when we caught the break. Um, so in the actual location it took place in is surrounded by marsh grass. Marsh grass was very green. Um, so we don't expect that any of it really migrated to any great distance or, or uh, uh, into any, if you will, potential surface waters or things of that nature. So um, right now the line is technically shut down. Communications with the state is they asked if I was going to march out there and repair it again. I explained to them that I would run it by you, but that I thought it would be unwise for us to expend probably another 140000 to run out to the same location um, when we're also very close to having the uh, bypass pipe delivered on Wednesday and Thursday this coming week uh, with installation following very shortly after. A matter of fact, tomorrow we're putting a valve, installing a valve on one of the lines in preparation for that actual work. So um, that's where that stands, and I think it's, uh, I wanted to bring that up to your attention uh, publicly um, because it is reflective of the, the next conversation that we're going to have, um, and that is the Church Street lot itself. Um, <coughs> pipe, this pipe is going to be continuously fused. Uh, Chris, if I can just they stop one moment, just area. based on what you something you said, I want to be very clear. Sure. The duct lion pipe has been discontinued. It is not being used. It is not being Period. used. The valves are closed on each end. Right. Thank you. Not being used at all. Matter of fact, um, uh, Mike Duby told me that he had uh, the septage hauler in. They withdrew water from the line to the point that it went back to clear, Good. meaning that we were actually drawing in salt water uh, in this this particular break so um, there isn't any uh, there isn't any significant amount of raw effluent left in that line to uh, cause any potential contamination to anywhere else so that's where it thank stands. you yeah if I could just jump in on this topic real quick <clears throat> there's two parts of this that Jenna Chris could talk about what needs to happen and why is it that this parking needs to you know th that we have to readjust and move the parking elsewhere um, in their parking lot. So let me speak to that. And then there's been some work that we've done, all of us together, Chief Sawyer and myself, about options for the board to, to authorize to allow that we solve the problems of folks voiced earlier. And just before we get going, are we all set with all the permits we need and everything? No. Are you get, going to get to that? Uh -huh. No. Um, we well, sometimes give you the impression, like, for instance, Jennifer has paperwork ready for the SRF loan because we both can't do the same thing. My last several days at work have been ex spent um, pushing buttons, making calls, um, trying to get the state to basically um, produce the use and occupancy agreement for us to go up along Route 101. Uh, we've been working at it with them very, very diligently and our engineers at, at Wright Pierce. Um, they, everybody agreed we've come up with a detail of uh, a physical shop drawing of how we're going to suspend or hold the force main pipe next to the bridge as we go over the creek, Tide Mill Creek on 101. That's been the big uh, fly in the ointment, if you will. Um, my understanding this afternoon, I did finally get a response from uh, the person who's uh, typing up and issuing the UNO. And she said she thought we were very close, that possibly we could have the thing. If she didn't have it on there, her desk by the end of today, she'd have it in the morning. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, um, but we were very, you know, I had to talk to um, the 
head of DOT or, or someone in his about the fifth person down, sixth person down on Friday afternoon. I talked to the deputy commissioner at DES. Um, everybody's pulling together to get this done. But when I became aware that the pipe broke for the third time, it kind of raised um, <laughs> the stakes. So it made the calls. Um, they're definitely working with us to get this, uh, and I think I think we'll be in good stead uh, with the permit, and it'll be in hand when we in fact need it. Okay, very good. Yeah. Okay, parking lot. So with that, uh, just where we've left off, so the temporary pipe will start being delivered this week. Uh, the pipe comes in on the trucks. It is 50 feet long to start. Uh, this pipe gets fused together through a fusing machine. Uh, that will just make it larger and larger. They can actually pull almost 1,800 feet at one time, wow. which makes it easier for when we're laying it and getting it, you know, to snake into position. Obviously, um, we're down pretty much towards the center of the beach area. We don't have a whole lot of room to play with. Uh, the parking lot itself, multiple things going on. Behind the fenced-in area, uh, behind the pump station itself, if you can just visualize it, there's a fenced-in area. That's our secure area for uh, parts of the operating part of the pump station. It is in there that tomorrow we're starting with the site contractor to go in and connect the valves. The importance of this valve is that we are saving a significant amount of money because we're using our own pumps. We're not renting the pumps on top of our pumps being just sitting in the pump station. We're actually making it work so it can work for the remaining force main uh, that's in the marsh as well as the temporary pipe, so it can do both of them. So we cut in the valve tomorrow. They start actually fusing pipe Monday. The idea is that you t we're going to want to take the lease lot, so the leased portion of the Church Street Pump Station's parking lot. And the reason we need that lot is because of the turning radius, the swing. The other two in and out, if you're just going around the pump station in a little way, the big trucks can't make it because we have the fence right up to the other sides. So we actually will be offloading the pipe from the street and bringing it into the Church Street Pump Station's lease parking lot. This is a lot of jumble on the words to make sure we're talking what about the right one. What does lease parking lot mean? So there are 10 spaces that the town leases to people or to companies. I don't know the specifics to whom, uh, but they are a paid leased spot. And so that's their designated over not, uh, overnight entitled, not a first come first serve, they're guaranteed a parking spot. Uh, they have been notified and uh, this will be part of the discussion obviously, you know, one of the thoughts was let them park in the Church Street parking lot across the street. So they'd have their lease hanger um, and so people would know it's them and, and just relocate. We are being told that Monday we start and that would be done the following Monday, getting all the pipe laid out and put along 101. We're doing the site work up front, so we're working to cut that valve in, and then the other piece of the site work is connecting it uh, to the manhole on Tide Mill Road. We've already called the concrete company to come core the structure. The excavating company will be out there uh, to get it all unearthed so that it's ready to just attach uh, once we get that done. So in that, I'm gonna call it eight days, seven days, is when we need to have the ability to move around, be free, be able to drag bigger pieces of pipe, smaller pieces of pipe, stage it, you know, even on the sidewalk. That's another very crucial component to this, is that if we're unloading from the street, the pump street, pump, the pump station side of Church Street, no one's gonna be able to drive in or out. I'm gonna have, you know, especially the out of the, pump station, I'm going to have the 18-inch pipe. It's on the surface there. It isn't until we hit uh, Quarian's driveway and Unitil's second driveway and the resident that lives there that we're going under. The rest of it, as we've always talked, is on the surface. So for the, let's call it the eight days, I need to be able to have the freedom to move around. I'm going to have the larger trucks, the equipment. After that eight days, there should not be a problem opening back up the residential lot and the lease lot. There may be a few less spaces, meaning I have to block off the part where they can't drive over the pipe, yeah. but the lease lot and the other end, and even down there today on a hot day like this, it was not 
completely full. I'm not saying it doesn't ever get completely full. That's not what I just said. I meant today that there were some extra spaces. Um, we understand it's a slight inconvenience. I will completely empathize that I get it. You know, when I go down there, I'm a Hampton resident as well. You know, you don't have a lot of choices. This week I did see $30 parking. You know, that's, it happens, but the eight days, I don't, I don't have a better solution than not closing it. Because for us to get this work done and to get it done as quick as we can and have them in and out in there, to be constrained makes it difficult. Is this the time that we're going to be talking about the parking? Because I, I see we also have the beach business employee parking discussion, which is something mm -hmm. different. Yes, that's the because, next thing we should touch on, yes. So this is the, what we're going to be discussing now. Yes, sir. Because I want to well, bring... As long as the chairman says yes. Uh, I yeah, well, well, let's, let's get this one first, yeah. and then we can you know, yeah, find out what the police chief I would like to bring some information forward, because I was here when we made that lease uh, parking space mm -hmm. and how it worked at the beginning. Um, at least I think this is the same one. Um, we were <clears throat> um, approached by many people that live like on Cutler and all those different streets that are to the north of the, to the west of the church. And we, um, at one point, Fred would know all this, um, allowed people to lease and they it was at a lower rate rate than what would have been paid for like if you leased from the state it's pretty expensive we had three different rate prices depending on which lot you choose to lease yeah. in I think it was like 400 to 700 dollars or something that's like about that the range, just 300 and something at this this lot you're talking about and it ranges up to the 700 range for the the uh, island path oh, pardon me the yeah. behind the police station and then there were places like the gray gull um, uh, motel, you know, the rooming house there, they were, they did it at, over on that parking lot. So Rick, if I could just one moment, yeah. if we should clarify on the idea that they're going to need that spot and the board authorized just to close and take it for the project, yeah. I think that would be step yeah, one. Yeah, we'll do that yeah. first. Yeah. That okay. if we would ask the board to make a motion to <laughs> authorize. I'll make that motion that and we I'll authorize second them. It. All those in favor? Wait. Well, wait, one second. I, what I was concerned about, or am concerned about, is the duration. So you're telling us that like a week from tonight. Two weeks. Just two before weeks. 4th of July. Like the yeah, second. Then it's, this isn't going to go on all summer. No, this Correct. is not meant to be the whole summer. It's not meant to be until we get the permanent pipes in. This is what I need to construct the temporary pipe. Okay. And, the, and have you the permit from the state to use the uh, bridge? That's what Chris that's was just pending. saying. We're hoping to have that tomorrow. That's, yeah, that's, that's what it, okay. said that. Right. And I would like to make it so that the people that are sitting here realize that people are paying in that same lot right. for to lease spaces. They're not giving them for free. So there's two lots here to talk about. Yeah. One is between the pump station parking lot area mm -hmm. and between the church. There's a small dirt area in there. Yeah. That is the leased lot. That's what people pay to lease, and that is you have a spot. Yeah. Then there is the area around the pump station that a vast majority of folks were focused on tonight yeah. that is posted as resident parking, much like yeah. it is up by the lights and other and places. I understand that. And that's a first come, first serve. As long as it's available, you can park there with a, a, a permit, a, a, a sticker. And, and it allows overnight in that correct. lot, which is rare for many of our town lots. There's only two that allow So that. first, let's go. We have a, a, a motion and a second to allow you to close it. So for that short period for, that, of time. for the construction for the construction period, period the, yeah. of the temporary line. Just to be clear, for the construction period. as for long as you needed it, you're hoping it's that short period. Correct. Right. Right. It could be a, a day or two or it could be my luck. You, you never know yeah, what you can never happen. Know. So, so I want to make sure that right. people it's for the it's for the construction of the temporary line. Well, assuming best case. So all those in favor? Unanimous. Now we'll talk about so what I would like to understand is are, are, are people still leasing the spaces in the church? That was on the table at one time, but it seems to me that more, not enough people were interested in no, it. No, people, that's why we people didn't do lease it. in three lots. Yeah. They lease at Church Street, the lot we just discussed. They lease at Island Path, and they lease at Ashworth Avenue. Yeah. Those are the three places we issue uh, leases to right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. So, yeah, because I believe that we did try it to do the church part of it, but it just it wasn't working out. There wasn't a huge demand, and that's probably why we just went to that other lease. Well, there is a spot. There are two lots there on, yeah. on, by the water tower. 
There's uh, one that's no, a, I understand yeah. that. And and we have, I think, sold on the uh, Church Street lot, the one we're talking about. There's ten leases to that lot that we've sold this year. Yeah, that's so all. Th that so each year they do pay the money to go to lease it. Correct. It's and Correct. so what I would like to know is. Um, on the other lots, are all of them overnight parking? No. Oh, no. Most all of our lots, with the exception of the resident one, so we're back around the pump station, which allows for overnight parking. Most of every other lot, other than the lease lots, the lease people can stay overnight. Everything else has to leave. Mm -hmm. That's what the rule is. So only the lease people are supposed to be parking they there can be overnight. Over, they can be overnight and have a special placard. And in the, the this resident lot and High Street are like the only overnight allowed resident parking lots that we have in town. So people that are parking in the uh, resident uh, permit parking, they're parking there overnight. They're yes. not supposed to be parking there. No, overnight. they're allowed in that lot to park overnight. That one lot. Correct. But not the one at High Street. High Street does not. The veterans across the street from Cinema Rainbows, those all have time limits to shut them off overnight. High Street uptown has an overnight ability there as well. They do. Okay. Yes. That's what I wanted to know. Okay. Thank you. So, so now our issue is the solution to the folks who are being displaced based on our construction. Jen, Lieutenant Gidley, myself, and the chief have kind of been bouncing around ideas um, and some change today because of the pulling the pipe along issue so I, I think the there's no perfect solution to any of this but I think the good solution is we move all those folks right across the street into the church street that's what I've come to believe I'll now. make that motion that so I just want to caution you on a couple first. of things with that mm -hmm. number one we've got two groups of folks it's the least folks and it's resident folks so my question for you is and this is a this is gonna be a challenging management issue how many if any are we going to limit that to? How many spaces do we have around it's, the pump it's station? It's not, it's hard to tell because it's, it's a dirt lot, yeah. but I would say somewhere in the order of 60-ish, and we have had identified some issues of people who are using it for long-term storage, which is not what it's allowed for. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, I've been using the number in the, the 30 range, I think is, is a reasonable one. Uh, you know, I think that's there, but I think what, you'd, what I'd ask you to do is we'll identify a number and give us some flexibility to the chief and his staff that are dealing with it. We're going to have to come up with a solution to how best we do it. There's no perfect solution to this because the two issues that pops there are going to need permission from you to, one, to allow it, two, to allow it overnight, and we're going to manage it the best we can for this two-week period. And then we'll notify everybody, move back where we were, and we, we solved that problem for the rest of the summer there. So you need, that's what I you need the 10 leases. They're well, going to come in. We're going to allow the, whatever number so, leased, even if we sell others. Right. They're going to be going there. They're going to be going there. And an additional number of residential mm -hmm. parking. Now, you heard tonight some folks asked you to consider allowing anybody who has a, a, a town sticker. I want to put that out for your consideration to see how you want to deal with that. But I think you know, we, we have roughly 40 spaces, 30, 40. Again, it's a, you know, a count. Does that sound, you know, we're back and forth on that. It, can, it could be more. It can I think be more 60. depending on that lease lot isn't full. So the right. residential parking goes into the lease lot. We have some concrete barriers there now, which we did uh, because we wound up taking part of the fence down, I think, on the first break and didn't put it back up knowing that we were going to do additional work. So why don't we pose it this way? Give us the authorization to put an equivalent size or an equivalent number let us work with the, you know, can the you chief put staff the space with the uh, concrete barriers like up there I've been playing around or with how best we're going to accomplish this yeah whether it be yeah. cones or barriers or what have you we're, we're, we're going to figure it out I think the intention here is if it's the and it's what it sounds to me like the board's intention is give us the authority to accommodate these folks that are being displaced over in the other lot We'll deal with it for the two weeks. So we'll I'll back. make the motion that um, we allow the people that have leased and not include them. And then it sounds to me like there's 60 spaces. So I would like to make a motion that we uh, isolate 60 spaces to have people use them. And I, I, that's my motion. All right, I'll second it, and I think we should have some discussion. Yeah, I think so, we should too. And I will tell you that uh, when I'm driving down... Um, uh, Church Street, uh, I see so many people that live down around me getting out of their cars with wagons and stuff like that. So people do use them. Absolutely. Yeah. But I do feel that if, if we just open it up totally, 
uh, that a lot of people that haven't really been using them are probably going to start Possible. going. And I think that we have 60 spaces there, and I think that's what we should limit it to. So okay. that's why I made my motion. So we're just talking about those that parking lot, that one parking lot? We're, no, it's actually two parking lots oh, okay. that we're talking about I'm just to move to them. My... Right, so, I mean, if this will be somewhat helpful. It's basically I don't know if I can show 70 you. So spaces. There's an aerial shot 60. here of the pump station. Yeah. This dirt area is right. primarily what's been used as mm -hmm. the, the, the resident lot. I we're going to push that across that the street here. Yeah. And there's two sections. There's the church's version and our section yep. of that parking lot. We're going to accommodate the displaced folks from these two lots in here. Oh, okay. Up to 60 residents st okay. uh, stickers, according to the motion that's on the table. For only the time that the lot is closed. Two Correct. weeks. So we'll yeah. put, well, well say well, till the construction well, goes the construction, in case there's a right. delay. Yeah, because otherwise I don't think it's going to be fair when we start talking about these uh, beach business employees who are going to be parking. So that's a whole nother discussion. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be is, paying for their parking. So portion A is for the length of this const this temporary construction, the, the installation of the temporary pipe. Um, and I want to put two other things just for your consideration. One is that, that we do anticipate there will be an impact on the revenues generated in this lot. Correct. We know that. Um, I'll put on the record, Fred was not a, a fan of, of this, this idea. He wanted it to be for the, the season because he was unsure of when the ramp up for the final project would take place. We have, since he's been on vacation, discussed it more, and it, it's pretty clear to us we're going to have a finite end, and by the time we're able to award the new contract, mobilize and get out, um, we're into the off-season, we're past mm -hmm. Seafood Festival, so we'll have many other options to accommodate anybody who's displaced at that time. And we can have further discussion. Exactly. Right. That's, that's how we feel. So we take care of the immediate problem, accommodate the folks who are displaced across the street, and we'll do our best to manage it. So it's a total of 70 spaces. So the immediate problem is we're going to take care of the people who want to come down to yeah. listen to the music, to come right. down in the evening, the yeah. residents, right? If they get That's there. part of that. If they get, it's first come, first serve, I know. It is. Folks but I mean, I think place. it's important that we have parking for those type of people, yeah. because that's the kind of person you want down at the beach. Yeah. You want Hampton residents they, coming down they there. They pay for it. You know, and Rick, and, I just want to be clear on your point of 70 spaces today. Are you directing us not to offer any other additional leases for sale? Because no, no. If more people want the leases, then so it's, it's I'm the glad 60 to hear that there are people doing Sixty it. plus the leases, mm -hmm. correct? Right, so we're gonna we're gonna deal with that. That's the sixty, right? Yeah. And then we're gonna deal with the business stuff in right. another. Right. Okay. Well, I just want to make clear that we're gonna. So business, I would ask that there be a, a motion to what we just discussed to accommodate the folks displaced by the construction for the period of this temporary pipe installation in the Church Street lot for 60 resident stickers plus the, the leases that leases. are displaced. That's right. Okay. So you made, made you that yeah, I see, may I please hear from the public? I see head shaking down there and I like to hear from them now before we make a decision on this. Ellen? Ellen, yeah. Uh, Is it okay? Okay. Yes. Sure, I'll let you I, speak. I have a question for you. Um, on Sundays, the Church Street lot, um, the parking extra parking from the church is allowed to use Park Street, the, uh -huh. the ch um, church street lot, the resident lot. Mm -hmm. And so that lot is overflowed on Sundays during, so I, I'm just wondering, you're, you're talking about residents. Um, are you going to curtail the ability of the we, church? We cannot to use curtail that? the church's ability. We have a, an agreed upon <laughs> lease with them. Not in their in the in the resident lot. Well, we still have a. Com we I'm talking about the resident lot. Oh, okay. The resident lot is filled with people attending church. So what, basically, what what I understand the board just did is we are recreating the same or similar number of spots that exist today across the street. That's all we're doing, and we're not. And the folks who use those on a first come, first serve basis can use these on a first come, first serve basis. And that includes the I, I, whomever the is using it I'm, now. I'm I'm saying that a lot of residents have to pay for parking on Sundays because the non-residents are in that lot. And I, so, I understand. I said that I, don't, I haven't heard the board changing dramatically. So from that the was my part. that was it's my just, question: Is we're are recreating you deal the with displaced that folks? Issue? Is what this motion did as best we can in that other lot. And, and in, the, in, in those spots, it would have to be a resident. Right. In the, the so sixth going not. to church, they'd have to have a resident sticker or else they're illegally in okay. that. Uh, that, that the was church has some parking that they have. Yeah. If I understand your question, you're saying you've seen folks using the residential parking lot for their overflow. I was told by the church that when I asked about it, 
that they had an agreement with the town. We do. To yeah. use. There is an overflow, and again, we're, we're going to do we're going to do our best to accommodate. Okay. Is what we were given direction. It's a couple week period. We'll deal with it. Okay. My we'll my other question it. is if um, there there's a couple things. Um, I think there's more than sixty slots there. That's just for. I, I tried to get a count today when I was going by. Again, it's not. Um, it's not. Marked I know. Out. This, the next question is: um, You said that there was going to be a few less spaces for the rest of the summer. Mm -hmm. So um, my question is: A lot less, or I'd say because, probably at least a good fifteen less. Okay, because it's completely full. So we'll deal. I would suggest weekends. we'll deal with that. When we come to when we know what it looks like when she const when they're able to constrict to what they have to, and then if we need to make additional adjustments, we can come back to the board and, and make additional. And we're going to talk about beach business employee parking discussion for people that okay. work at the beach. Okay, thank I think you. The best I, thing I you appreciate. Know is the board's it. doing the best they can to accommodate yeah. everybody, but there is no perfect solution for everybody. Mm. No, you know, I that, agree. That, I, those I, lots generated just on two shifts over the weekend, close to I think ten thousand dollars over the weekend, and and there's balance on everything. So, I, and yeah. I have no problem with closing the lot. I just want to make sure that, you know, even the kids that are working down there, if they're residents, they, you know, their parents are paying for f taxes also. So That's why we're going to have as many yeah. spaces as one as, Thank as you. try to have it. I with appreciate the other. it. Thank you very yeah. much. Good. So, we have this vote, we have this a motion. I just want to, in light with what uh, Rick is saying, <coughs> getting together. At a little bit later date to work on the rest of the parking situation. Well, we're going to talk we're some about it tonight minutes. with with the police chief. But I think let, let's get this vote passed okay. first, and then excellent. So, are all can I paraphrase? Yeah. <laughs> so, so we're going we made a motion that we're going to take the similar amount of spots that are in the resident and the lease side, no, and let them use number of sixty. A pay Church Street right. parking the lot. Lease. Right. Let them use that for the duration of the. Cons construct this construction, this temporary construction pipe, the temporary yeah. pipe, correct. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Good. All those in favor? Unanimous. Who was the second on that? Was it you, Jim? Me, yeah. The one um, thing, while we're, we're talking on, on that, is, is and, and I know the police chief's coming in to talk about some, some other parking issues, but at some point this board's got to sit down and look at, this, this lot has been used for years uh -huh. for vehicles parking in there for long-term storage. Uh -huh. And we got to uh, somehow address that, both that and the, the uptown lot here. Mm -hmm. We've got to look at that. This, totally the, agree. These yeah. lots are made for yep. residential parking yep. for Hampton residents. Yep. It's not made for somebody that has an extra car, a, an extra car mm -hmm. and they need a place to put it for the summer. That's not what it's for. Right. If, if they want to do that, then yes, we have the lease spaces and they can do that. Mm -hmm. And but, what about the um, people that are allowed to park about the full moon parking that's been You're done? talking the flooding parking. Yes. Yeah, that, that's an issue uh, it, that we still are issuing those tickets, but we're going to have to come back. I wouldn't suggest you deal with it tonight, but we're going to have to right. move back on that one again. Okay, I have one question on the 60 spots we just did. Yep. Is that going to allow overnight parking? Like yes. Okay, yes, because so that We're recreating it as best we can, okay. just like the other lots. Because right. Church Street has not been typically overnight, correct? It has not been. Right. Okay. okay. And that, again, these are these are going to create some challenges to manage, and we'll do our best to do so and to accommodate everybody. There. Okay. Well, there was one more thing on here, just because we were here. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, don't believe, I don't believe you voted. Yes, we did. Yeah, did you? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, Wake up, Chris. <laughs> no, no, I guess because there was conversation. It, yeah, it did go back. Yeah, it did. But it was, it was it was Thank you, though. Uh, we brought it back, but we did vote okay. to allow yeah. it to happen. Yes. More we'll now. So the other item, uh, ironically, is the Church Street pump station. Uh, there is what they call a, lack of better words, a muffin monster. It's a grinder that gets put in the channel of the wet well or right before the wet well. Uh, all the influent comes in, and during high, you know, bathing suit diaper season, that's what literally cuts all this stuff up before uh, it makes it into our pipes. Well, the other day it made some horrific noise, uh, didn't sound right. They went in there and uh, many of the eating the teeth uh, had broken and uh, come off their rails uh, on this grinder. We called in the company to come look at it and the type that we have in there actually gets rebuilt 
so you don't lose the whole. I mean, it's as big as this table long. Uh, they can go in and rebuild the teeth. Uh, one of the things we also found out is right now it shreds it into long pieces this way, which still can get caught up in motors and pipes. Uh, when they rebuild it, it will actually be confetti. So it will cross cut uh, to make the pieces smaller. Uh, that is uh, $20,300, and we are asking for approval from the board to withdraw it from the wastewater development access charge account. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. I'll second. Can I just ask a question? Yep. Yeah. What, what caused Rocks. it to break? Do we know it was just wear and tear? Um, it was everything. It was wear and tear. It was, uh, they call it ragging uh, that got in there. We did find some rocks. When I say some, like four or five, but you're talking over the five years that it's been at the pump station, um, and it's way before our pipes, so I don't want anybody drawing, you know, different conclusions. They wouldn't be able to make it through the pumps. Uh, but, yes, they were in there. This is very, very, very deep. I mean, this is the deepest part of all the sewage comes down through here. Uh, the yeah. amount of flow that it takes, the pitches that are on the pipe. Okay, any other questions? I have a question. I do, too. Um, on the mosh pipes, is there, <laughs> we've had three really great summer days, and we have one working, as of right now, we have one working. And we are in a okay shape, right? Right. Now. So you guys all have a way of just, like, being we, able to constantly look at that? Yeah, the, um, talked to my staff early Saturday morning, texted, everybody was texting ask them to look at and monitor through the day the flow coming through the Church Street pump station. What would be the capacity? Um, the chart shows that Saturday for basically 7 a.m. to midnight, it continually pumped between 610 and 630 gallons a minute. It was kind of like it was a real steady, eddy day. So even though it was that hot, um, that, that's the background flow. Um, the next day, I'll say 9 a.m. to 3 in the afternoon, about the same. Other than that, the pipes, pumps just continued to cycle on and off. Uh, there's three functioning pumps in there. So we're able to get through that. Warm spell. Yeah, we'll, we'll be able to get through it um, for the next 8 to 10 days uh, while the other pipe gets put in, um, as long as we don't have what would cause it to exceed capacity is, let's say, a very, um, like a winter storm. Okay. The last time it was maxed out was significant flooding back uh, yeah. Yeah. March 2nd. Yeah. So um, those conditions don't exist. Uh, the groundwater is pretty low. Um, we're not seeing a lot of infiltration at the moment. Um, so we think we're in a very, very good shape. So Can you do a contingency plan? Right, I was just going to say, we met today and yeah. went through all of that yep. about contingencies. There's automatic uh, alarm systems. And if Chris, we've talked about it today, if we see conditions that cause concern that could rise above a concerning level, we may go to uh, uh, personnel monitoring the wells during that period of time as well. So it's a very good, solid contingency plans to deal with it, and uh, I feel pretty confident where we're at for the next. What about the motion? Yeah. Well, we a quick question. I'm not very good with mechanical stuff. It says the Church Street pump station channel grinder. Is that what we're talking yeah, about? Yeah, Muffin now, Mounts, there is a name. Channel grinder I, is what it does. It, right. But it, it's not designed to chew up rocks. No, no. no. And was that part of the new system when we um, put the Church Street pump station in, when we, yes. we got rid of the other? So there yep. was one there, or a new one there. There was a new one installed. Right? So we want to keep this stuff out so that this one doesn't wear We're off. We're working right. with them now, um, developing a bar rack system. Ah. So picture it like a bunch of bars yeah. uh, to put on that. It will still let the stuff get through. You got to be careful. It's just like we were saying with the monitoring. You, you, you don't want to block it so that the stuff gets stuck here before it gets a chance to get eaten. But we are actually working with the manufacturer on that. Yeah, because okay. that's we, a tough thing to do. We have a motion and a second. Yeah. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Chief. You guys will uh -oh. sign this before you leave. <laughs> hey, Jamie. Do you have a copy of that that we have to sign? Or? Is that the SRF? Yes. Yeah, I think that's right here in the okay. pile going around. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks. Before we we'll leave that here in case it isn't. Yes. 
pretty sure. Yeah. 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 Side, I just want to make the board aware we did have a little gust of wind earlier this season, so we have 36 uh, residences without power up in the Langdale area due to some trees down. I expect that to correct it pretty quick, but uh, save the time of putting out a text to you that we have a few power outages. So. Thank you. Just in case. Okay. So, uh, very new to it this year with the police department taking over the operation of the municipal parking lots down at the beach. Uh, so I've drafted a memo to go over some of the ideas we had to try to alleviate some of the uh, issues we're facing and try to help out with the issue of the employees and parking down there. So the transfer of parking lot operations from the Recreation Department to the Police Department has gone well under the direction of Lieutenant Dan Gidley. A, small, a number of small changes have been made to improve the operation and safety of the town's parking lots at Hampton Beach. We have opened the Brown Ave gate as an exit from the lot in front of the Police Department to reduce the amount of vehicle traffic that exits onto Ashworth Ave. With the increased need for seasonal employees on Hampton Beach, parking has become a constant issue. Many of the employees cannot afford to pay afford the pay to park lots, which can cost as much as fifty dollars per day on a hot weekend, which we experienced over this weekend. The expense of parking has caused these employees to find alternate parking in some of the quieter residential back streets at the beach, much to the annoyance of the residents in those neighborhoods. A suggestion has been made by uh, Commissioner Chuck Rage that we utilize the Island Path parking lot as a designated lot for beach employees at a fixed rate of pay to park. I believe this suggestion has merit with certain conditions to include. Any business within the Hampton Beach Village District interested in participating in the Beach Employee Parking Program can submit a list of eligible employees to receive a seasonal pass issued by the Hampton Police Department. The seasonal permit would include the name of the employee and the business they are employed by. Any business within the Hampton Beach Village District participating in the Beach Employee Parking Program will pay a seasonal fee set by the Board of Selectmen or their designee to the town of Hampton. And I just recommended a $50 fee for the production of the permits. The seasonal beach employee parking, uh, parking permit would allow a beach employee to park at the Island Path Municipal Parking Lot at a fixed seasonal rate if spaces are available. The fixed seasonal rate will be established by the Board of Selectmen or their designee, and I've recommended $5. The beach employee may be requested by the parking lot attendant to provide positive ident excuse me, identification to concur with the name on the permit when they enter the parking lot. That any seasonal beach employee permit issued to a beach employee will be restricted for the use of the employee while they are at the place of work employment listed on the pass. A seasonal beach employee permit may be revoked by the chief of police for violations of conditions of the permit, any violation of law, or town ordinance. I'm also seeking permission from the board to establish a moped parking in the Ashworth Ave municipal lot. There are corner areas in this lot that are dead space to small, uh, too small for a full, too small for a full size vehicle, but could accommodate several mopeds. These corner areas would be posted as moped parking, similar to the parking at the Kings Highway lot. If the moped, if the moped parking areas are approved, I recommend a fixed rate of five dollars be applied for mopeds. Yeah. Yes. With the increased bicycle traffic we are seeing at the beach, I recommend that the purchase of, uh, of bicycle racks will be placed on the lawn area between the police department headquarters and Ashworth Ave Municipal Parking Lot. Placement of the bicycle racks in this area will provide a level of security that could encourage visitors and beach employees to utilize that mode of travel, lessening traffic congestion at the beach. Question for the chief. Uh, I don't have a question. Uh, this, this is very thorough, and I like the moped and bicycle part. Uh, could we please post the chief's report online? We're getting a lot of calls. I'm getting a lot of calls about parking and everything down there. I think it would be great to share this online. Well, I, and I think once, if, if we approve this, yeah. of course, it'll be going out to the beach businesses that they have to... They have to apply for that. I have engaged also in conversation with the Chamber of Commerce. They're more than willing to assist us in getting the word out to their businesses like so it. we can get this list going very quickly and get the, get the program up and running. Good. So, any other? Um, yeah, so you, would, so you would take a restaurant down there, say the Sea Catch, and if they wanted... They would provide me a list of, say, say they had 50 employees that were, you know, they can decide who their 
willing to go to bat for. They give me a list of, say, 25 employees. We then produce a pass that looks very much like our uh, lease space pass, yeah. and we'll produce them at the PD. And all we'll do is, all I want is the name on it and the name of the business, and then when they pull into the lot, the attendant can request to see a license to make sure it's the same person, Good. they're not handing it off. And, you know, I, I would just want to have the authority vested with me that I can revoke any of those permits at any given time for the violations I outlined. And so it if would it's just a be at the island path lot? Just the island path lot. And we, the reason we selected that, it's probably the least known and least used lot we have. Mm -hmm. And the best thing about it is one of the complaints you hear about some of the employees, especially the ladies, walking back to their cars if they're parked down off of Brown Ave. It's not well lit and there's no sidewalks. The sidewalks almost the entire length of Ashworth Ave, obviously the Ocean Boulevard, well lit with businesses, less likely for them to encounter a problem, maybe feel a little bit safer getting to that lot. And I've also seen cruisers actually, they now go through the parking lots now. You will see increased patrols in the lots when we took over the lots and a lot of the stuff that has, I don't want to get too much into the, the stuff we're doing, but a lot has to do with the, the protection of the employees in the lots and particularly the amount of money we're seeing that those are all handled by police officers at this time. So there's much more police traffic in those lots. And the other thing you, I believe you said was it's on availability. If the lot, if it's a- The lot's full, the lot's full. The lot's full, the lot's full. We're not right. holding spaces for them. No. We're just allowing them to- Based upon availability. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. You've talked with business owners about this. I know it came Chuck from a business. Came, this is just, I want to be clear, I don't want to take credit for something. This is Chuck Rage's idea and talking about some of the business people, and I know okay. Rusty was involved in some of the discussions, and this uh, seemed to be a good idea that we could try to get up and running pretty quickly at almost no cost. Okay, I think it's a great idea. I think there providing for, for, you know, employees at a cheap price is a great idea. I think it's absolutely personal opinion, ridiculous that people go to $50. Yeah. I think it gives us a bad name. I think it's it's capitalism. I know, but I, I we don't do that. That's I know right. we don't, but the I'm just saying do that. Yeah. it's ridiculous. But yeah, it's a great idea. You're doing a good job. Right. So each business pays fifty dollars one time, and then there are, season. As, you know, the employees pay five dollars each day. Right? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Or right. whatever, whatever. Again, these are just recommendations. You guys would have to take a vote think, on you, you what the businesses pay and what the yeah. what the uh, employee pays. I need a motion to I'll go with the chief's motion, recommendations, and I'll make the motion at fifty dollars for the business and five dollars for each okay. day. And, and just one quick, because as I'll long as that. I'm thinking of it, um, the residential parking lot at the end of High Street. Yes. There's constant problems from out-of-state people there. And it's yeah, if, and if they is, if they I'd have like, if they have constant a constant tickets for a lot there are of constant people. tickets there and if and some people with an out of state plate can still have a Hampton parking pass they can they tax own, yeah, but they're I'm, a taxpayer but I'm not talking about the ones who ha have a parking pass I don't um, know how many the police department have been doing a pretty good job at we're monitoring. just so you know I, used to get really I'm cross. getting ready for I, I, I'm yeah. due back in on the second for my uh, quarterly report yep. and that's one of the areas I was going to highlight because we had been. We had Mr. Mills a couple of years ago and set an all-time record. And then we, such a great guy, he's a postmaster, Very, he became our evidence tech. So we lost him to the parking enforcement. So you lost all this. So now we've got a few more people Good. and we have a retired officer that's now come in and helping us and he's doing a bang-up job. So I think the, the numbers will be surprising because uh, they were surprising to me when I checked them the other day. Excellent. All right. So, so uh, okay. I live across the street and I'd, I'd see them. All the time. Yeah. I see them all the time. All giving the so we have a motion and a second on, on just a couple of things. Yep. Is there an implementation date you're looking at, Chief? How long to ramp it up, or as soon as you can? Um, is there a limitation on the number of spots you're looking to do? Or no, no I don't limit. believe so. I, I mean, I think it's going to take a little while for it to get out there, and how many people are going to actually use it? Because a lot of people live at the beach too that work yeah. there. So yeah. this yeah. is more to help the folks that live in town. Yeah. Yeah. And I know, um, you know, we're trying to get more local folks to come down to the beach and work the young folks. Yeah. I know that uh, somebody was talking the other day at a meeting how they they want it recruited, but they got a, the state parks got a lot of the kids from Exeter, right? For Exeter High School to come down. Well, I'd like to see the winning kind of kids come yeah. down, but we got to offer them a, a little something to help them out getting absolutely. down there. Absolutely, that's good. So absolutely. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. So I should be able to get this up going with it. If the kids live in Exeter, they can't park. No, nope, kids can't pay regular. No, if they're the employees, employees. any of the beach district yeah. can, can do it. Yeah, but the business right. has and to. Be. And it's for work-related purposes, right? If they're coming down with yeah. with their bathing suits yeah. and correct, if, if the attendant right. has the right to check the ID to match it, if he sees they're coming out with beach gear, they can call us and let us know, and we'll revoke the permit. Okay. And you can get it online. 
Uh, if, I think it would be a good idea. Use your influence. I'm not sure. And just so while we're on this topic, that the uh, beach precinct and the um, chamber has come up with a mobile app that's going to go on your phone. Yes, and that's, that's coming up so that it will tell you and the towns involved with this. Yes, so that. Um, People will be able to go to their phone and see what lots at the beach are open, oh what the price is wow. for those lots. And so people driving down to the beach will know right away where lots are. So it's, it's going to be very handy for our beach businesses. Wow. And it's going to be very handy for our, our guests coming here to know what, what lots are open and what lot. And that's will, that, will that have prices on it? That will have prices on okay. it, too. That's and they will, they will be monitored hourly. So if the Ashworth lot fills up, then all they got to do is call into a phone number, and they say it's full. If they change the price, they call in, it changes wow. the price. That's amazing. And another thing is uh, we've talked about that we're going to have these further discussions about the different parking lots. Uh, one thing that has always been um, many, for years and years and years is the beach precinct parking lots were rented out to people in the wintertime <clears throat> uh, to leave their cars there for the season and stuff like that. And I think that's another part of the discussion we need to. I've had many people say that before there was a garage there, I'm not sure if they could still accommodate people that want to leave their cars there for the winter. I don't know who would um, want to leave their car down there in the salt water. No. <laughs> well, yeah, with their lots, they, maybe lights, they can share in some of this employee issue and, and keep their that, lot share is, that is high issue. Yeah. to begin with. And the I have heard a lot of people that, have, that leave for the winter, they miss that ability to do that. So I think that should be part of the broader discussion at some point. So we allow that at the High Street parking lot? Yes, yes. Well, we... Well, with a permission. Not for prayer. the winter. We shouldn't leave the, out for the whole winter. No, no. No. Yes, One sir. other item, just to let the board know, I know I sent out a memo. I'm sorry, I didn't see you. I'll get okay. yeah, okay. you. I called in first. <laughs> She's trying. So. No, Chief, you go. <laughs> Last item. Uh, I know I sent out, I'll let you know that I sent out the memo to the New Hampshire DOT that the fence was going to go up uh, on the 28th. Yeah. Yeah. Based on the crowds we experienced over the weekend and looking at the weekend coming up, that schedule has been expedited uh, with the cooperation from Public Works. We're going to be deploying that fence tomorrow. Wow. It's time. We have to get it up there. The crowds we've been experiencing today. They, and was, they were walking. It was, the crowd was huge today. For Jay walking the night and gave us up. Yeah. So. so I'm sorry, Regina, go ahead. I just wanted to tell the public that while we're talking about parking, especially resident parking, I assure you that the residential parking lots are getting enforced this year. So yeah. if you are a resident, make sure you have the current resident sticker in the right spot on your yeah. car so that it stands out and the parking enforcement officer can If you see, see a it. violation, call the department. Somebody will get dispatched out there immediately. Yeah. And, and I just want to add and, and thank the chief and his staff for the added burden we put on a run in these parking lots Definitely. this year and all the work that he yeah. and his staff have done. Yeah. It's uh, it's worked out remarkably well. I, I think it's worked out excellent. You well, know, all the credit, thank you. the credit go. You give credit where credit is due, and that's Dan, Dan Giddley. Giddley working together with. Uh, you know, we sat down with uh, Victor Marco and got a history of the lots, kind of yep. how they've been Good. running and little things we could try to do to tweak it and improve it for, for things. So we will be coming back uh, at the end of the season with some recommendations for you. And, you know, some of it's going to be a little bit of money, uh, but to improve the quality for our employees, their safety and security, but also for our visitors that are using it just to improve the experience. So we'll see Excellent. in the fall on those. That's Thank okay. you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Okay. Next we have the town manager's report. Thank you, sir. The um, a meeting of the Seabrook and Hampton Estuary Alliance and New Hampshire DES. They're hosting a series of three workshops this summer entitled Building a Flood Smart Seacoast, <laughs> Ways to Protect Your Property from Coastal Flooding. Uh, the three dates are June 19, July 17, and August 21. For more information, you can go to www. Uh, it's shea for New Hampshire.org, and you can register at floodsmart.evenbright.com. Hmm. Um, Second is notification we received from Aquarian to notify folks that uh, well six, that well that had previously been taken offline uh, due to demand need has been pressed back into service yep. and is being blended back into the, um, um, the system, into a drinking water. Uh, they assure us that the numbers stay well below the, uh, those set by the EPA currently, uh, and we'll continue to keep an eye on that. Uh, that's what I have. Anything else for the chief, uh, for the <laughs> yeah, yeah. acting town manager? Uh, Rick, one of those, those to. 
Mary Louise. Uh, are we yeah. on item two now? No, we're on well, the town manager's report. Well, I know, but yet it has item one and two. Well, we're on go to either one. We're on his report. Oh, all right, okay. Um, we do we have a fixed date in July to meet with Aquarian? Sixteenth. We pretty well firm on that. Okay, because I am going to want to discuss <laughs> flushing whatever they flushed uh, last week. That was a mess. Okay, I have a couple things for Aquarian yep. too. Well, six yes has been turned back on, which was communicated to the board. Mm -hmm. Um, that that would eventually happen. And also, well, 22, I know they think they plan to start the pump test this week, but they said because of the drier conditions, it might get postponed again. Mm -hmm. So they're not sure on that. And also, I was talking to Carl about concerns about, we're not in a drought right now, but why do we have to wait till we're in a drought right. before we do anything? So there is on their website, if you go to the New Hampshire Aquarian, easy ways to conserve and it just shows you some tips, you know, when you water your lawn, wash your car, you know, ways you can do it so that you're not doing it for long periods of time because they said the, it's not people using the water to bathe or drink, but it's people that are just continuously watering their lawn yeah. that, yep. you know, uses a lot of the water up. So if anyone wanted to go on and check out maybe ideal ways that they could save a little money and conserve water even when we're not in a drought, that might be something that you like to check out. Okay. Uh, Jim, town manager's report. Good report. <laughs> Rick. Thank you. Okay. Okay, the next one is old business pin cost. <laughs> so this is the, um, the cost that come in from the pins that you folks authorized Fred to go ahead and quote for you. Uh, the quote is uh, $1,125 to purchase the necessary number of pins to deal with the folks who are um, hitting the milestones on the service. Do we need a motion? Yes. yes. I'll make that motion. Second. All those in favor? I'm opposed. Four, one opposed. Okay. Next is uh, new business. We have a federal bill grant application, and that is being pulled. The uh, people that are working on that will come in at a later date to talk about that. Okay. Uh, SAU 90 waivers for fire alarm sprinkler system for fire department and fee schedule. So this comes out of a um, that the board had previously set out a fee schedule for based on the size of a building and with the new construction over at the school uh, that bill would be somewhere in the $6,000 range. The chief has written to the board to ask for a waiver of that. It, it, it is a logical point I would tend to agree with because you're basically taking it from one pool of town money to another one. We would take it in as a receivable into the general fund or not bill it in the first place and take it from the taxpayer. So it seems like a very logical thing to me. The town building, same town funds that deal with it. So Questions from the board. I'm ready to make a motion. I have a comment. Um, the SAU 90 and SAU 21 receive impact fee money and that is revenue for them. The town does not have impact fees levied by the planning board. Are we talking impact fees now? Is that our, is that on the agenda? We're not talking. It's, it's money. Is I'm it on the agenda? That's no, what I'm asking. Well, I read this and it, they're talking about the waiving the, the um, installation charge. I don't have a problem uh, having the uh, work completed for SAU 21, but I don't think uh, we should allow that free. They are it's getting they are getting impact fee revenues, and this is an appropriate thing for them to um, to use that money for. Well, you should make a motion if that's what you feel. Mm, okay, I, I have no problem with the um, academy uh, having service. Uh, by the fire department, but I think because it, that is a school separate from the town that we should not waive the installation fee. So we have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Any discussion? All those in favor? <laughs> All those opposed? Four to one. Okay. So okay. back to the original motion. Do we waive the fee? Has anybody got a motion? I'll make a motion we waive the fee. I'll motion. second it. Second. All those in favor? Four to one. Okay? Okay. Very good. 
Uh, disposal of Cat TV excess inventory. So we need a motion from the board attached in your package. You'll see a list of materials that are no longer useful to them. Yeah. Um, and either they dispose of them for some value or turn them into trash. But you need to declare it as excess property. Mm -hmm. I'll make the motion to declare it. Motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Mary Louise, there's some here you didn't sign. I don't know if you did that oh, purposely Oh, sorry or not. about that. You did have rather a pile there. There was know. a pile. It was indeed. Okay, so the last thing we have is naming of the subdivision at 230 Mill Road. Well, this is a larger one. Yeah, I'm sorry, 230 Mill Road. Um, that came in, initially came to the planning board. It came to the, the review committee um, as Estabrook Drive. You folks took a vote then for Loy or Staff Sergeant Desiree Loy. Yep. Um, so where they were already in process, my recommendation is we authorize that Estabrook Way. It was already in process, and the next street yes. that comes open we'll do as Loy. Yeah, but that's, that's against what the policy has always been. The policy's been that the streets all be named after uh, people that were in the service. And, and, and I would say that, the, and, and I agree with you, and the process with this case was, we had expired all of those names when they came in. Yep. Estabrook was developed as a part of that, and subsequent to that process, remember there were a previously. couple of, we had two or three streets that came in during that period of time. One of them was uh, like Labrador Way or Labrador Lane. There was another one as well, because we had no more veterans on the list. And since that, this, is, this new one has come in. So we know we have at least one other neighborhood new mm -hmm. street that's available in very short order we suspect that will be available for it um, and at the, my recommendation is that's what we do leave the Estabrook Lane continue because that's what they had it's on their plans in the beginning down that path already the folks who are doing the development are sort of committed to it so there's another one that's that Labrador way is uh, is uh, already mm -hmm. you already approved that previously approved. so this one what I would say is we we approve the Estabrook way let that continue on both have been approved by 911 and the next one which is I think the one that's currently sitting there to be to be done is uh, done off Winnicott yeah. Road, uh, become that Loy, and there's a version of Way Street, whatever that has all been approved by 911. So that's what I recommend. So if there's other uh, people that are lost in the future, they will get the correct. Priority. First, we would add so that first, to the next one, right. and those go to the top of the list. Yeah. Again, we, we've had some discussions about how does the board want to approach that. Is do you want to create another list? Are there former town fathers you want to make a list of or other folks that have served perhaps you want to deal with but we haven't addressed that yet so we essentially have no list currently other than this Miss Loy okay. uh, Staff Sergeant Loy and so that will be the next one is what I'd recommend so I would ask you to make a motion to approve uh, the naming of uh, the street that had come through Mr. Boyd had come through on their behalf as I think it's Estabrook Way uh, and, and move forward with uh, Staff Sergeant Desiree Loy's next yeah. as the next street I and there'll be move. some choices from that developer will way street drive whatever right. they choose to right it could be that. the whole name partial name however it yeah is. 911 is approved loy but not the other because it comes close so yeah. loy would be the name that's approved by 911 they just get to choose the just, suffix it, and it would be like the the uh toll ab toll ab has the brass plaque on it with the full name below it but it just says yeah. toll ab and it has the full name below it, right so. so the actual street name right. will, be the green name will be loy, loy. whatever and then that brass plaque is something that we can right. work on at the end. I so agree with uh, what the uh, deputy. So Mary Louise made a motion, Jesus second. Yep. Jim, all those in favor? Unanimous. That's good. Closing comments. Very good. Motion to adjourn. Oh, wait, no. We uh, we have we're supposed to have a non-public afterwards uh, to talk. Is that posted? I don't. It's not on, you don't have a, a non-public listed. You mentioned it, but it's we not mentioned on the it, but it wasn't on the agenda. So then we will on just the agenda next yeah, time. take we'll it up for the next. We'll one. take it up for the next one. We're not okay. Good. Motion to adjourn. By Jim, seconded by Rick. All those in favor? Channel 22. Thank you very much. Yeah.